Okay, we're about to get this started real quick. So we have um, we have a few people that are joining. This is an impromptu live. I'll be on in just a moment. Want to share it in our page, our Facebook um, page. If you are subscribed to this channel, you do have access to our um, free Facebook page, our Mission 500K uh, group on Facebook. And so I want to make sure I share this uh, live on there. And then we're going to get started, have a quick conversation and help you out a little bit. Okay, so just share on the live um, where you're joining from, what industry you have. Um, if you have a couple of specific questions, if we have time, I'm gonna um, I'll answer a few. Uh, so if you have any specific questions pertaining to government contracting, what you're working on, um, or something like that, you can go ahead and drop those into the chat. Um, I'm just trying to share this good link, and technology is not cooperating with me right now. You know what? Will it allow you to? All right. Okay. We are starting. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Tunji. Hey, TT. You're in North Carolina. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we are going to talk a little bit. Oh, you need to see my face. Hold on. All right. Can you close the door? Yeah. I'm sorry. No. All good. Stop share. Hey, people. So I get to... Uh, you see, unmute myself. I, mean, I am unmuted. So you guys can hear me and see me okay. Is that correct? Can you hear and see me all right? Yes, yes, yes. Let me know. I don't, I don't do the live thing often enough. And so I try to get my practice in from time to time and go live in here and just try to provide you guys with some value. And so hopefully I'll, I'll do that a little bit today, but I wanna make sure you can hear me. All right. You can, you can hear and see me all right. Okay, awesome. So you saw what, um, what I posted here. We're gonna talk for a minute about um, cracking the code, okay? Exposing common scamming techniques. Um, that are out there. And so I want to help you as much as humanly possible. Okay. So um, while we give folks an uh, opportunity to join, um, hey, Miss Connie, good to see you or uh, good to know you're here because I can't see you, <laughs> but good to know you're here. Um, I'll be looking over here a little bit because I have the, um, I have it up on, on another computer. But for those of you that do not know me, I'm Serena Moore Thomas. I am the CEO of the Highmark Group and the Highmark family of companies. We own a co-working space here in um, Jacksonville, Florida. It is a kingdom co-working space, um, a safe place for uh, faith-driven entrepreneurs to uh, do business in partnership with God. It's a beautiful space. 
and um, major things are happening in this space. And so we own a co-working space, which is Highmark Solutions. We have a distribution company, Highmark Distribution, and a management consulting company, which is the Highmark Group. Um, and I am blessed to um, I'm blessed to do what what I do. I am very very passionate about seeing small businesses succeed. I uh, have a lot of experience in the government marketplace, and we have courses and programs and things like that um, that have evolved over the years. And I think we're we're definitely at a great place in our programs. And so we have over a hundred uh, plus students that are in our Mission 500 K program. Um, part of that. That program is the as soon as you enroll, you get a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me to um, mind map your entire operation uh, as much as we can in an hour, of course, and um, start talking about your past performance and your uh, professional experience. And then I help you connect those things to government opportunities. And so you leave that strategy session with a 90-day strategy, like do this. Um, so I sit with folks that are, um, a lot of our students are newly 8A certified, and so I help them come up with their 8A strategies. Uh, I, I have been 8A certified. I am already out of that program, have been out now for more than um, three years. My, my father and my brother actually still continue to run the, the construction site cleaning company, but the 8A expired about about three years or so ago, okay? Um, but I was responsible for winning our first five sole source uh, contracts. And, and so I'm, I'm very, very familiar with that program. So I get to sit, help people come up with strategy. That's fun. Um, and then I get to help newbies connect their professional experience to government opportunities in that fun. Um, and so part of our program is uh, is that, which that, that strategy session. And then we have self-paced courses, which have been developed and evolving over the years as um, more and more students come in and then as I grow um, and learn. But I've been doing government contracting for a long time. I've been in this space, let me say that for a long time, like since before SAM.gov, like back CCR days, right? Um, I used FPDS. I, I like, I remember, or I remember, never mind, I ain't gonna tell y'all because I'm not that old, but my birthday is Saturday, amen? All right, so we're gonna jump into this live stream. This is time to talk and we find contracts on divs that aren't being bidded on. Yeah, so that's a that's actually an easy question. Dibs is one of my specialties and dibs is something that I absolutely love. That's the DLA internet bid board system. I tell you right now, I've won hundreds of purchase orders on there. It is not for everyone. Okay? If you're looking at drop shipping, it's not for you. If you dibs, I'm talking about. If you're looking at drop shipping, dibs is not for you. OK, if you are looking at kind of a hands off type of situation, not for you. OK, dibs is not for everyone. I teach how to pursue how to supply product to the government. Um, probably a little more than service, but I, I, I know both because I've done both and I only teach you what I've done, not what I read or what I heard. Um, and some people, when they hear me talk about dibs and because no one's really teaching about it, they immediately say, okay, I want to supply products. I need to be in dibs. I don't just teach dibs for product supply. Um, I teach other systems as well for supplying products. And some of those are a lot easier than it is to, um, to go through, uh, via dibs, which is the DLA's um, system. Uh, dibs requires some very specific um, labeling very specific delivery instructions, some very specific stuff. Um, and so you have to be committed to that. That has to be, um, it, it is preferred that you know something about distribution, wholesaling, reselling, like you're in that space. That's not a space that you want to jump into brand new to business and brand new to government contracting. Uh, so FYI, but how do you find them? They're on there every day. So if you search anything on dibs by FSC code, or um, PSC code, or uh, by date. Um, you can search by cage code if you have access to OEMs. Any of those that you search, what you're going to see is uh, open dates and close dates. And when the close date has passed, that means it's passed. 
but it still shows up on the screen. So it also means it is available for you to quote. So the question of how do we find contracts on dibs that aren't being bidded on, uh, anything that is still up there that is past the close date is still open and available. They used to have something called unawarded solicitations, which was on the small business site. It's not there anymore. Um, and they are doing things different. I'm trying to find out what so I can inform my students um, because that my students will be the first to know. Um, okay, so if you want to know about our programs, any of that stuff, mission500k.com, um, you can go there and you can find out about programs. And if somebody from a team is on the live, they can post it there. Okay, you can put questions in here, but I do want to talk to you about something very specific because this is important and it's it's actually something that happened to one of our students. Okay, so I want to expose this so that you don't get scammed, you don't lose money, you don't waste time, and you don't get discouraged. All right. Is there a work way to find out the shelf? Okay. Okay. I find it's too complicated. AM, have you been through my course? That that's my question. I'm, Dibs can be very complicated, um, especially if you don't have someone to teach it to you who does it or uses it, has used it, and has successfully won um, purchase orders. And, and so it can be very, very, very challenging. Um, so again, I teach on that. So we teach on, on that in the Mission 500K uh, program. I have a whole course step-by-step um, all of my templates, all of my calculators, all of my, all the things. Okay. So that's in the dips course. All right. So here's what we're here for today, though. Cracking the code, exposing a common scamming technique in government contracting. So this is a little bit of story time. And I actually want to share, like, I want to share my screen too, so I can show you um, the actual email. If I didn't redact it, I can't show you the actual email, but um I, I definitely like to. That's that's what that's what I re really want to do. So story time real quick. I had a student reach out to me and send me an email uh, and they were pretty frantic about it because they were it was an email from um, it was an email from someone at um, HUD, uh, apparently, and the subject of the email I didn't get to redact it and I don't have her permission to share her name. So hold on a second. Let me see if I can just scroll up and hide. No, I can't hide her name. Doggone it. Um, so the subject of the email says Lenova bid FR6146 in dash 072. Okay, that was the subject of the um, email that she received. So it looks like a bid number, FR, and some letters and numbers. And it says the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, is requesting a proposal from qualified firms to provide computer products and per, uh, peripheral. Please read the attached in its entirety. Um, proposals received after the deadline will not be accepted. Note, electronic request is only required for the quote. And also you can provide better alternative for the items or equivalent, okay? Your response to this would be highly appreciated. Regards, Ronald Flum, Housing and Urban Development, Chief Procurement Officer, 451 7th Avenue, Southwest Washington, D.C., 20410, and a phone number, and a little um, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, disclaimer, okay? And then attached to this, and I'm so sorry I can't show it to you because it's not redacted, and I didn't get the student's permission um, to share her, her, her name, but I'm just going to tell you the story, right? So, um, it's an email, and then attached to that email was a um, an RFQ with the Department of Human uh, with the the, the, uh, the housing and her, the housing department's um, HUDs seal in the back as a watermark, um, and it was an RFQ asking for I think it was uh, fifteen Lenovo laptops, okay, and it was asking for her price and everything so that she can um, submit, you know, for these for these laptops on an RFQ from the procurement officer at 
what appeared to be HUD. The email address is the first name dot last name, the email address that it came from, first name dot last name at dhud.gov. Okay. First name, last name at dhud.gov is where the email came from. So she sent it to me because they had sent her like two requests and a um, couple of things, right? I, I looked at it and at first I was like, okay, it looks like it's something for Lenovo laptops. Like, is this something you have access to? Is this what you want to supply? And then I started reading further. And we realized a couple things. So there were major red flags. Um, for those that are in the course, I'm going to actually post the RFQ. I'll post it in the course because this will be a, a, a course link um, eventually anyway. Oh, shoot. Um, so this will be part of the course anyway because I want the students to look out for scams. So got this email. Now she's like, Serena, I got it. I got the price already. I have, you know, access to Lenovo laptops. I can do it. I can mark them up. I'm, I'm able to resell them. Da, 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 da. Okay. What should I do though? I'm not sure if I should do this or do this or do that. And so as I'm looking at it, I stopped her and said, wait a minute, this is not right. Right. The RFQ, I could tell the watermark didn't seem correct. There was a couple different um, fonts all over the RFQ, like the address was different from this and from that. And so I went the extra mile because I want to see is this real or is this not a real opportunity? And so I called the 202 number, um, which is a, a number common, a DC common DC number, right? I called the 202 number that was on there for this person named Ronald. Um, and when I called, someone answered the phone who sounded like um, a foreigner. And I can't tell from where, but they had a really, really, really deep, deep, deep accent. And I was like, wow. Um, so then I started asking, like, where are you from? What department exactly? What are the Lenovo? What's the end use for the Lenovo's? Are they for the office? Are they being, you know, I'm asking questions. And the more I probed, the more uncomfortable the person got. And then they hung up on me. OK. And so, um, again, this is the story. This is what happened. Um, they hung up on me. And I said, OK, well, let me go online and now I need to check some information. So here's where the good part comes in. First of all, before I finish the story, first of all, if you are receiving direct communication from someone that is stating that they are a buyer, a procurement officer, a whatever, and they want pricing directly from you, and you know good and darn well you haven't networked with nobody, you ain't told nobody what you're doing, <laughs> you haven't contacted a person in the government, right? The most you've done is registered your business and say them then that's like red flag number one, right? Because you don't often get direct emails for that kind of thing if you have not been out there uh, developing relationships. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Please let me know in the chat. Okay. That's, that's number one. Um, number two, right? You want to look at the email addresses. And unfortunately, there are so many spoofs and scams and things out here. Um, I was immediately thrown by what, like, what's D hood? idea what what's that um and so the next thing I did was I'm looking for this person um and I think they said something about the office of small business because that's how I got there um I I want to hear what you guys are saying yeah this is okay so you, you guys get that part um so good you understand so the other thing right I went to, the next thing I did was I went to that department. So remember, every agency has an OSDIBU, um, the Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization. And so I went straight to the OSDIBU office, okay? And so this is what I do, and this is what you ought to do, okay? Oh, I can't show you the email. Okay, so I went straight to good old Google using old code, okay? 
So right here, HUD hood plus OSDBU. Okay. The plus sign helps people. That's like that. That's that old Google code. How you, you know, find what you need. Use the plus sign. Okay. So it's going to take me directly to the office of small and disadvantaged business utilization. This is where we all go. Right. Of course, this is where I'm going. If I want to learn about the forecast, this is where I'm going. If I want to understand um, who's in the small business office, remember um, those of you that are my students, you already know we speak to the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. These are not people that are giving me contracts. These are the people that can connect me with the folks within the agency that may buy what I sell, okay? So the, the this site is where I'm gonna go to find the forecast of opportunities. That's how I get ahead of opportunities, all the things. But usually what, um, what is also on this site um, and they are all different, is the small business office and their, um, their people, their contacts, okay? So HUD small business contacts, and this is where I went. Is this helpful to you guys? Is this helpful? I hope so. So what I did was I came to this site um, for the student, because now I'm curious, like I want to know, First of all, the first thing I'm looking for is do any of these addresses look like the address that I got an email from? Definitely, they all say hood.gov um, and they don't say dhud, right? That's one. Two, um, I started making phone calls because now I want to know, like, am I call, do, do any of these numbers look familiar, right? I can, they're all 402, then I have a 475, 475 or 402. That seems to be a theme within the small business office. So, you know, but HUD's a big agency. They can be calling from anywhere, right? Um, point is, do your due diligence. <laughs> the point is, do your due diligence. What ends up what ended up happening is we discovered, and I it was easy for me to detect once I printed out the document. They had they had um copy and pasted a watermark, put it on the thing. It was totally fraud. Okay, totally fraud, but everything about it looked on the surface like it was a real opportunity. Um, so we verified information, we did all the things, and what almost happened is. Um, because she she did, I, I'm almost positive she gave a price back on this one. Um, and I hope I'm not confusing her with another, but she gave a price back on this one. However, once they receive the price, here's what the scam is. The scam is you just think you won a purchase order request, right? A purchase order for some laptops at an agency that don't exist for somebody who is a whole scammer, <laughs> okay? So she would have spent her money to purchase what needed to be purchased, sent the items, because this is how it works um, on, you know, on you know, any of these, right? And never got paid because there's nobody to really pay her because she just got scammed. You see how that happens? Um, this is one, but there are many out there. What's the point? The point is you got to do your due diligence. You absolutely want to be connecting and learning from people who are not just think they know about government contracting, learned about government contracting, read about it, but people who have done it, right? People who have done it and are doing it and have the ability to show you what to do. Who you're connected to, who you learn from is critical, all right? Um, and so you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on that kind of stuff. As soon as you register your business and Sam, you become a target. They're going to try to sell you everything. Um, the, the very first call you get, and many of you that are registered in Sam, um, and those of you that have been doing contracting for some time, of course, you already know this, right? But for those that are newbies and you're just getting started, I'm concerned for you. So I'm, I'm trying to help you and I hope this is helpful. Um, but you, you want to... Um, you want to make sure that you're asking questions when these folks reach out to you, right? The first thing you're going to be offered is a, a you know, GSA <laughs> contract, right? They're going to tell you, oh, we can guarantee you a contract and this is what GSA does and da, 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 da. 
And that's not the truth. It's people that, you know, it, that 10,000, 15,000, I think is like the investment. Sometimes it starts around 8,000 to get a GSA schedule all the way up to 15,000, 18. I know people who have paid 19, dollars $20,000 for a GSA schedule and have not ever won a contract. There are more contracts won by purchase card. I'm just saying, you got to know your stuff, right? And so GSA, again, so once you register in SAM, you kind of become a target and you have to do your homework um, and know good and darn well, if you haven't reached out to nobody, nobody is reaching out to you directly, like come win this contract. I'm just saying, you ask more questions, okay? Is that helpful? I'm just trying to help the people today. Um, awesome. Glad it's helpful. Um, do you guys have specific questions? Do you guys have any questions? I know some students are on. We have some folks from our um, from our Facebook page. I just decided to kind of do this because I'm trying to test out this uh, live Zoom situation, and so that I can start putting some more content out here. So I'm 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 dipping my toe in the YouTube waters. Um, but tell me what questions you have, and I'll definitely answer um, if I can. Is there a direct way to find off-shelf AM? Okay, Denise, I have no idea. Okay, I have no idea. Who else? What other specific questions? What challenges are you running into? What challenges are you running into? What specific questions do you have? Um, so there's a, a, again, there's a lot to look out for. Um, it's important to do your due diligence. It's important to connect, pick up the phone. Um, this is key. I mean, one of the things that I preach here with my team, we pick up the phone, okay? We don't do 100% communication by email. You talk to people. Uh, there's a reason why even on your, the, those of you that are in dibs with me, right? Um, it's a reason why on that solicitation, there's a whole box with the offer, with the uh, buyer's name and number, phone number and email address, right? You make phone calls, call people, try to talk to people, um, verify information. Don't make decisions right there over the phone. Vet them, right? Do your due diligence. Do your due diligence. Do that. I am almost, I almost fell for the GSA program myself for 7,500, right? Um, and they sell it like a thing, like it's a guaranteed contract with the government. There's nothing guaranteed about government contracting, right? The first thing I tell my students is, look, I can't even guarantee your wins. Now, do we have people winning? Yes, they're all in our Facebook group. They won, they're delivering. Some have won and have not been able to deliver. That happens too. Um, but there's no guarantee. I don't award contracts. So I can't guarantee that you're going to win anything. My specialty um, and the, the, the mission of Mission 500K is we're on a mission to teach 500,000 small businesses how to succeed at government contracting without writing proposals. So I work on all simplified acquisition methods, right? Purchase orders, purchase cards, dibs, um, those kinds of things. That's what we, anything 250,000 and below, that's what I teach you how to pursue first so that you can make your mistake on a $200 order instead of a $2 million order or a $20,000 order instead of a $20 million order. Okay. When you submit bid on dibs after due date, when do you hear if you are awarded? So Jamila, it depends. Um, sometimes you hear right away. Um, other times you don't hear. That's the, that's the true answer. Sometimes you hear right away and sometimes you don't hear back. You just, uh, until it closes or cancels. Um, and so that's, that's just how that goes. Now, what I do teach my students how to do, so I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to see if I can show you this without showing you. I'm going to show you anybody's personal information. So one of the things that I do in my dibs course is I give an email template. I give all of my templates. So I have a sheet um, in our dibs toolkit 
and it's um, it's called something about email responses. And I teach you or I show you exactly what I say to um, the, the buyers when I put a quote in for something that is already expired. It's an email that I send to alert them to the fact that I put a price in and hey, if you still need it, boom, I'm here. And so it's a specific format because they like to receive emails in a, in a specific format. Okay. And so um, I can't, I'm not able to pull it up, but I teach you that I have that in the course. So yes, you, you, you may not hear back is the truth, Jamila. The good, you know, if it's a T quote, right? T quotes are automated quotes. So a person is not making the decision. The, the computer is. And most 70% of if, and I think I'm about right, about 70% of the RFQ solicitations in dibs are computer awarded, right? You fall within the parameters. You're within history. You have the capability. You pass the DLA checks. It's, it's, it's good old artificial intelligence a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> they've been using that a long time. But they 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 check it and they can make the award. The computer can make the award um, without a person actually having to review your pricing at all. That's one of my favorite features about dibs. Um, and again, um, anything, anytime you're supplying product to the government, and the reason why in all of my teaching and all of my videos, I don't, I'm not an advocate for, oh yeah, I just want to supply some stuff and be hands off and then collect. And then that's it. Especially when you're dealing with DLA, right? That's one of the mo more important agencies. They handle the global supply chain. Um, the, the They handle logistics for 11 combatant commands, plus, 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 um, plus allied nations, plus all. So you, your stuff has to be right. You can deliver any old way if you want to to that depot without that RFID tag and without that proper labeling and without the mill spec packaging, right? And your stuff will sit there at the depot and you just will never get paid. And when they get around to telling you it's sitting here, that's when you'll find out. <laughs> Like it is very, very so delivering to the depot. That's why doing business with dibs at um, DLA is a little different. I have a whole course on just that. The others like, you know, Unison and, and places like that where you're delivering sometimes to an office, you're delivering sometimes to a base, you're delivering sometimes um, to an embassy, you're delivering. Those are different right? DLA is very specific because you're delivering to a depot and they have a very specific requirement. So just like um, there have been times where I've had DLA uh, dibs opportunities um, and let's say the opportunity was for a uh, hundred, a thousand O-rings, right? And the minimum order quantity for these O-rings though is 1,500. So I got 500 extras. The minimum order quantity is 1500. So what I do is I charge you for 1500 now because I have to, because that's the minimum order quantity. But if you say you only want a thousand and I tell you, okay, well, you can get this other 500. It's going to be free because you're paying for it anyway. And you respond and say, no, I don't want 1500. I want a thousand. There's a reason for that. And that's just understanding your customer. That's understanding what DLA does. Um, right. So sometimes this stuff is being used right away, aircraft on the ground. Sometimes it's being stored. Sometimes it's it's replenishing inventory and they have space for different things. Right. It, think about DLA is the, the home depot of the government. Right. We don't have room for 1500. We asked for a thousand because we only need a thousand because you got this much space and that's where we're storing it. So you, you got to understand your customer um, and what their needs are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Most of the bids I go for are okay. SZBOSP. Awesome. So if you win a bid, the product comes to you and you have to repackage it. Tonight. Sometimes, yes. AM, yes. Yes, sometimes that is the case. You do. The product needs to come to you and you have to send it out. So, okay, just think about this for a minute. You get an order, right, from a government agent. You put in a price. The government agency says, I like your price. I'm awarding this contract to you. 
boom, for this thing. Okay. And, and in your award document, it's going to tell you, um, in your award document, it's going to tell you how to deliver it, where to, to deliver it, what times you can deliver it, depending on where it's going, right? An office, a base versus um, an embassy or somewhere. Um, they're going to tell you exactly how they want it. Well, if you just order it, mark it up, order it, and ship it directly to them, answer me this. How do they know that's from you? so that you can get paid, right? How, how they know? So this is where labeling comes into play, right? Your award document is gonna tell you how it needs to be labeled. Um, you're gonna have to have your, um, Okay, you're gonna have to have your 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 package um, your packaging documents. Like you're you're gonna have to prove that you are delivering on a contract that you have, because that's the only way you get paid. So yes, the, the stuff has to come to you most times, unless you're talking pallets and things like that. Or there are people, and again, I have not done this, so I don't tell you nothing. I ain't do. I've never dropped shipped a thing no sorry rewind that's not true i did drop ship i drop shipped some whiteboard paint to kabul afghanistan to an embassy office but let me tell you how let me tell you how and and why it was done like that they needed whiteboard paint first of all. Um, and the only person that made the paint that they wanted was Sherwin-Williams. We had a relationship with the Sherwin-Williams person, like a, a type, not the Sherwin-Williams store, right? We had a person that was getting, get, got us the good price. We were about to supply it. Um, and they got us a good price. They were working with us. They knew it was going to the government. Um, they knew that it was going to the embassies. They knew it was going overseas. Now we had to have the carrier and that was a different situation. Um, so getting the carrier to get it, you know, shipped overseas was, was separate, but because we had a relationship with the person at Sherwin Williams, we were able to supply the, um, the labeling directly to our person. So we did the labeling, we gave it to them so that they could do it for us. And then um, our carrier took it from there and got it to where it needed to go. So it never came to us first. That was the only time I've ever done that. If there's things like that are palleted, um, again, relationships matter. If you have a relationship with your, um, with your supplier, that makes a difference. If you, uh, but we also have students that are in our class that are winning opportunities and, you know, they're doing it from their apartment. You don't have to have a warehouse to, to, to do, um, to supply product. Um, that's not necessary. Okay. I'm going a lot longer than I intended, but is this good? Victoria, girl, where you been? Get in that Facebook group. We, you, you owe me a update. Um, very possible. That's possible. Am and then again, if you are, it depends on what you're talking about, right? So if you're talking about dibs versus talking about, you know, delivering some office supplies to somebody, that's the, those are two different things. So dibs is the one that's going to be very specific. So it really depends on where you're working. Okay. Has this been helpful to you? Have I provided you with value? I pray so. I pray so. So we have a free, um, yeah, you owe me an update, Victoria. We have a free Facebook group, people. Um, and you are um, you are able to, to go in there and um, we network, we build community, we, we ask questions. Um, we're, we're considering actually making some changes to that Facebook group, but right now it is available, it is open, it is free. Uh, I try to provide as much value as I can at the end of the day. Um, my goal is to do for others what I wish somebody would have done for me, okay? Um, that's really honestly my, my, my goal. That, that's, what I, that's what 
I have that desire to do. And, and so I try to do that the best that I can, um, as often as I can. And so the Facebook group is available to you. We also have, of course, our um, program, which again, um, the, the key to the program is the fact that, you know, you get the strategy session with me um, and we get a chance to sit down and go through your things. Um, go through your um, your past performance, your history, all the things so that we can determine what kind of opportunities make sense for you. And I hope you put together a 90 day strategy to kind of jumpstart. Um, at the end of the day, I don't promise uh, six figures in 90 days. I don't promise, you know, write a book in 30. I don't promise win five contracts by tomorrow. I don't do none of that. Um, everything that I do from coaching to uh, <laughs> to teaching uh, and the strategy sessions, um, I lead you to something called JOI, J-O-I, the journey of implementation. Because at the end of the day, if you don't start where you are, you stay where you are. And so, um, you know, you can watch 4 million YouTube videos and try to piece together all this uh, free information. That is the longest possible way to get to where you want to go. Um, and, and the thing that I talk to students about all the time and people that inbox me, um, you know, everybody wants to build a, a six-figure business, an eight-figure business, a nine-figure business, a multi-million dollar business, right? Maybe that's you. You want to build this big business. Um, well, you know, let's talk about the investment on zero point zero zero dollars. The the return. I'm sorry. <laughs> you you invest, right? You invest at the level you expect to to receive, and so um, it is an investment. You got to invest in your professional development, um, and what that investment does. It's not so much about the person because you know it is what it is. It's penny plenty of people out here you can learn from. Um, but what that investment does is um, it makes a, it, it draws a line um, and it makes you show up better. Because after I done put down this investment, guess what I'm doing? I'm showing up now because I'm, I got, I need a return on this. But when you invest zero, it's always optional. And, and stuff that can be done at any time is rarely ever done at all. And so if you're really going to build a multi-million dollar business, don't think you're going to do that by gathering free information on YouTube. I'm just saying. Um, we do the best we can. I'm going to share as much as I can. But I would have to be on here all day, all night, and five times on Sunday um, in order for you to get it all. And um, and so we can't do it all in these kind of settings. That's why we have the program. That's why we have strategy session. That's why we have courses. Um, that's why we have things. And I'm not everybody's flavor either. You know, some people like Sprite and some like Sierra Mist. <laughs> I, you know, your choice. So um, I care deeply, though, and I want to see you win. Um, I want to see our small businesses succeed. I am sincere about that. Um, all my information is verifiable, okay? Uh, you can Google Serena Moore Thomas. I've been talking about this stuff for a long time. Um, I, and, and it is what it is. I, I try to help you the best way I can, okay? So I pray that this has been helpful to, um, to you. I put a few links in the chat. Um, I also have a free three ways to win without writing proposals. If you have not um, seen that webinar, um, it is three ways to win government contracts without writing proposals. That might be something you're interested in. The link is there. You can register and take a look at that. All right. So that is all that I have for you today. Hopefully I've got all your questions. Um, hey, Stephanie. Hey, y'all. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm testing out my, my little YouTube chops. <laughs> I'm trying to do more and trying to show up for, um, for you all. Um, so hello, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Ricky, thank you so much for joining. Andre, hello. They locked my account. Yeah, that happens to quite a few people. Um, but they'll send you an email. I think you're talking about dibs or the DLA locked your account. Yeah, that happens. That happens. Um, and they'll send you an email and they'll tell you what you need to do to get it unlocked. And, and that's that, you know, they'll unlock it. <laughs> that that happens. So several that happens to several of our students um, more recently. And I and I'm I'm trying to discover if that's something that they're doing like for a reason. 
Um, Cause that wasn't the case. That hasn't always been the case, but I've heard that more and more lately. All right. Anything else? Well, as they say in church, if all hearts and minds are clear, um, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. <laughs> you guys have a um, have an awesome, awesome evening, okay? And um, I'll stay for the last couple of questions uh, because there's a little bit of a delay, but I'm out. Oh, for sure. So it's just thought, um, I think I have a video on this channel. You should subscribe to this channel. You should. Um, I have a video on this channel that talks uh, about sources thought. Um, I think it's three missed opportunities that uh, three opportunities that small businesses are missing. Um, sources thought is one of them. Yes, DLA. Uh huh. Yep. 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 Bunch of information you have to provide. So sources thought is one of them. I definitely. Um, I do not use Sam to find opportunities, and I do not teach my students to use Sam to find opportunities. We use Sam, but we use it for very specific reasons, and um, it is not the best method to use Sam to look for current opportunities. It is best to get ahead of opportunities, so that's what we try to teach you to do. Awesome. Okay, so I'll reply to some of these comments um, later. If you have not, how many of you are in the course? Let me ask that before. I, how many of you are in? If you are not in, say I'm, if you are in, say I'm in. Um, but if you are not really, I, I mean, I think our program is probably one of the, um, it's just, it's just good. It's, it's good because the people are dope. Um, and I cut through all the foolishness and get to the point. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I I, uh, I would love to have you guys in our um, in our program, and so definitely look at it and see how you know how you can grow and um, expand and do the darn thing. We're coming up on the end of the fiscal year, right? It's about to be Christmas in July, right? Big big spending time, and you want to be in position. You want to know what to say, how to say it, when to say it, who to say it to. Uh, that's important. You can have all the information, but if you don't know what to do with it. What good is the information? See that? All right. Love you guys. Talk later.